your financial goal. You want more money? Turn what you know into them. Start hanging out with the people who have it. You create wealth on your own terms. It is not only your rights, but your duty to build wealth. You are fiscally fabulous. And it's time to enjoy your legacy. You're listening to Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, a podcast that aims to provide you with the tools, guidance, and encouragement you need to build your wealth, enjoy your wealth, and leave a lasting legacy. Dr. Martin is an accomplished attorney, speaker, business consultant, and real estate strategist, an all-around self-made success who provides highly sought-after expert consulting in the creation, growth, and maintenance of generational wealth. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, my name is Chrissy Bartles, and you're listening to Fiscally Fabulous. For profit or nonprofit? If you're one of the millions of entrepreneurs around the globe who dream of starting and maintaining a successful business, there will come a time when you need to consider whether to incorporate or not. Now you might be asking, why do I need to incorporate my business anyway? Doesn't that mean a heavier tax burden and a massive paperwork headache for me? Well, yes, in some ways it can, but incorporating your business can also do the following. One, it will allow your company to continue indefinitely, even after you pass away, so long as it does not go bankrupt. Two, your ownership interest in the company can be transferred to another individual, like a family member. Three, it makes you much more attractive to new investors due to limited liability and the easy transferability of shares. Four, it can protect you from any personal liability and unwanted lawsuits. Chances are you've heard the terms for profit and nonprofit tossed around. But do you know the differences between the two? Do you know which of those four points I just mentioned apply to for profits and which apply to nonprofits? If your life's goal is to strike it rich, you might be saying to yourself, why on earth would I want to start a nonprofit? After all, you got into entrepreneurship and business development to earn at least some money. Stands to reason you should incorporate your new business as a for profit, right? Well, not so fast. The term nonprofit is a bit misleading, so it's important to understand the differences between these two types of businesses and determine which is best suited for your company's needs and goals. In this episode, we'll be exploring the key differences between for profits and nonprofits in at least four areas purpose, funding and revenue, company structure, and taxes. We'll examine these and how they can help us to determine which one is right for you. Whenever you set out to start a business, one of the first things you need to consider is, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of creating this business in the first place? Is it to make tons and tons of money for you and your family? Is it to raise money for a charitable cause or bring awareness to an important issue? Your reason for starting a business can often be the guiding principle over whether yours should be for profit or nonprofit. So, what are typically seen as the purposes of these two types of businesses? Let's look at nonprofits first. A nonprofit, also called a not for profit corporation, is a non-stock entity. In other words, it cannot issue stock to shareholders. And if you're looking to start one, chances are you are on a mission to focus on activities that benefit society in some way. Here, the goal is less about profit and more about promoting a social cause. That's why we tend to see so many nonprofits in the arts, health, food and water, and environmental industries. If your purpose in starting a business is to solve important, potentially life-threatening problems, then you might want to consider incorporating your business as a nonprofit. A nonprofit may certainly generate income, 
and indeed needs to do so in order to stay in operation. In fact, it cannot accept, hold, and trade monetary instruments as well as tangible goods, and despite the name, can legally make a profit, technically called revenue. The use of such revenue and how much revenue can be made legally is subject to scrutiny, however, and is tightly regulated. For profits, on the other hand, can in fact issue stock to shareholders and have a primary purpose of generating income and creating products and services that are deemed valuable to consumers. These companies develop products and services that directly solve a problem or help to correct an inefficiency. A prime example of this is Apple. Among its most popular products is the iPhone, which allows consumers to communicate, explore the web, record audio and video, view content, and even create. What used to take half a dozen different products to do, Apple has given us more efficiency by melding several products into one. So it might be that if you're more interested in solving problems directly with a greater emphasis on profit, then perhaps your business should be a for-profit. But there are other factors to consider. Your business, be it for-profit or non-profit, needs to be set up in a way that ensures it is a financially successful endeavor. Yes, that's right. Your non-profit needs to bring in a profit or revenue, just like a for-profit business, in order for it to be successful, for its doors to stay open and its goals to be met. For both types of businesses, this may involve securing funding or seed capital to get the company up and running. But the manner in which this seed capital is obtained can be decidedly different depending on how you choose to incorporate your business. While the for-profit often relies on bank loans, local investors and revenue generated from sales, the nonprofit secures its funding primarily through private donations, corporate sponsorship, government grants, and even crowdfunding. Currently, there are over 1.5 million nonprofit structured businesses in the United States alone. Let me say that again. 1.5 million. I'm sure you've already heard of one of the most famous nonprofits in the world, the YMCA. That's a huge organization, a global one even. Are we to believe that this global nonprofit keeps its doors open to the public, maintains all its equipment, and provides its classes without any sort of profit? Of course not. Okay, well, so how do they do it? In the YMCA's case, it makes its profits through membership fees, sponsored events, and donations. These profits are then recycled back into the company and surrounding communities and are used to pay its professional workforce, such as their leadership, marketing, and business staffs, along with their highly trained people who lead their programming services. These profits are also used to fund products for the community, which may include things like construction of a new park for families. The key word here is recycled. In contrast, a for-profit business does not recycle its profits back into the community or company. Instead, it creates profits through the sale of products or services. This income goes back into the pockets of the owners or founders and its employees. Now, at first, it may be easy to label this as greedy or selfish. After all, he or she is pocketing much of the money from company sales while the nonprofit counterpart is putting that money back into the community. But hold on. Before you go writing off for-profit businesses as morally corrupt, remember, where a nonprofit has helped raise awareness to combat a disease, a for-profit has, for example, helped the world communicate more effectively and efficiently. They can both help society. They just do so in different ways. While you can certainly generate a healthy income from a nonprofit, if money is the primary goal for you, there's definitely more to be earned in the for-profit sector. 
The Salvation Army, for example, one of the most successful nonprofits in the United States, reported a total revenue of three million six hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars in 2016. Contrast that with a for-profit company like Coca-Cola, which reported a revenue of $31.85 billion and a net income of $6.43 billion in 2018. (laughs) Then there's Apple Incorporated, which reported a revenue of $265.595 billion in 2018, with a net income of $59.531 billion. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Okay, we've talked a little about purpose and funding. What about the structure of the company? For profits like Apple and Coca Cola are generally managed by business owners, sole proprietors, or partners, while nonprofits are managed by trustees, governing bodies, or committee members. While management and ownership of a for-profit can sometimes involve more than one person, nonprofits are almost always managed by a group, where no one single person holds ownership of the company. And that's an important distinction to make. If it's important to you that you own your own business, that you'd rather not share ownership with a group or a committee, a for-profit business structure may be for you. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, A for-profit will bring me more income, and I'll have more control over the company itself. Why wouldn't I want to start this kind of company? Well, most companies can't succeed without a trained, reliable team or workforce to carry out the company mission. A company needs employees, a marketing and business team, lawyers, and so on. And in a for-profit structure, these people need to be paid, which, when added up, can be a pretty hefty expense for a company. After all, it's not just salaries you're likely paying out, but employee health care and other such benefits. Nonprofits, on the other hand, pursue their mission with the help of at least some paid employees. But more often than not, they turn to volunteers to accomplish their company's goals. It's an excellent way to save on company expenses by having talented, reliable people volunteer their time to work with nonprofits. What's great about this is typically these are people who want to be there, are involved in doing the work that benefits their community or a cause, and they don't mind they aren't getting paid. For them, it's not about the money per se. It's about the experience and the chance to make a difference. A lot of talented and motivated people work in both types of businesses, whether paid or not. But there's one person that no one likes having around the office. Uncle Sam. (coughs) Taxes. Let's face it, no one likes them. As necessary as they are, you might even say we detest them. Many of us can only dream of paying no taxes on our earnings. And if you are one of the would-be business owners who prays to escape from taxation, then incorporating your business as a nonprofit will surely appeal to you. These are registered as 501c3 organizations, which means the service they provide is seen as a public good and therefore are not required to return portions of their earnings back to the government. In addition, Any person or company that donates to these organizations will be able to write these expenses off as a tax deductible. For-profit companies, however, by law, must pay taxes. Sure, companies like Apple or Coca-Cola can donate to charities and perhaps write those expenses off as tax deductible, but they will still be required to report and return a portion of their earnings back to the IRS or International Revenue Service. Now, as I was doing some reading on our show's topic, this whole issue of revenue, taxation, and ownership got me thinking. What happens to the money earned by a nonprofit if that company should close its doors and essentially dissolve? Does someone get to keep it? 
If so, who? Is it donated to a charity? Or does all that money just mysteriously vanish into the ether? So I did some more digging and discovered something very interesting. We noted earlier that companies like the YMCA or Salvation Army are not owned by one individual or group of individuals, but are controlled by a governing board of directors or trustees. In other words, they are owned by the public. This remains true even after a nonprofit dissolves. In fact, its property remains permanently dedicated to exempt purposes. Any remaining assets after debts and liabilities are satisfied must be transferred to another nonprofit organization and not to members of the former nonprofit or any other private individual. So, just because the nonprofit you helped start has money in the bank at the time of its dissolution, that doesn't change the fact that it is still considered public money and is not for personal profit or individual financial gain. This point ties into what I mentioned at the top of the episode, where I talked about at least four benefits of incorporating your business. But of these two business types, only the for profit model would benefit from all four points. Remember, Members of nonprofits can't transfer ownership or assets to another individual, only to other nonprofits. We could spend days, weeks, months, or even years diving into the intricacies and differences between for-profit and non-profit organizations. This is only the tip of the iceberg. But in determining the best means of incorporating your business, you need to ask yourself these key questions. One, why am I starting this business? Is the mission to solve a direct problem for consumers, or is it to improve my local or perhaps global community? Two, do I intend to prioritize personal profits and financial growth with my business or community projects and social awareness? Three, how important is ownership to me? Will my business run more smoothly if it is owned and controlled by myself or even just a few individuals? Or will its operations be more of a success if the control is shared by a governing board and the ownership public? And that really is key here, that word success. What company style and structure is going to give you and your business the greatest likelihood of success, be it personal or public? Regardless of your answer to those three questions, perhaps this is the answer that matters most. You now know some essential differences between a nonprofit and a for profit corporation, and how each can help your business. But don't be afraid to do some research on your own. Ask questions and persevere with patience. Starting a business doesn't happen overnight, it takes a lot of hard work, but I know you can do it. Thank you for listening, everyone. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast or visit us at www.enjoyyourlegacy.com forward slash fiscally fabulous podcast to learn more. On behalf of Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, I'm Chrissy Bartles, reminding you to enjoy your legacy because you are fiscally fabulous. This has been Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire. If you would like to learn more on how you can build generational wealth and leave a lasting legacy, go to www.enjoyyourlegacy.com and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Until next time.